Yo, what is up guys? It's the Goblin and welcome back to another Fortnite video. In tonight's video, it's going to be another Season 6 Tips and Tricks video. And this is a nice little gameplay here I got with a decent amount of kills uh, about a couple hours ago tonight. And I wanted to make a video analyzing my moves and different mistakes, and great plays I did where I had good decision making, and talk about it in today's video. If you guys could drop a like on this thing, let's go for 805 likes. That would be absolutely amazing. Smash that like button, let's go for 805. I would appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I know some of you guys want me to, uh, or want to know who are the winners of the start of the season six battle pass and the winners the first couple or the first set of winners is egz66 mr mk emin dollar yt and lamarcus age and i'll show some pictures of proof up on the screen right now i am still waiting a response on one of them just to confirm what region they're in before i send the code but yeah those are the first set of winners for the season six battle pass so uh those are the the couple of winners those guys have obviously been contacted and received their code so let's talk about it today's video we're going to talk about basically I used the double barrel and the double barrel did get nerfed pretty heavily about 25 or 30 damage which was pretty huge especially considering that's the base damage to put that in perspective when the shotguns originally got nerfed like the pump it went down by 10 damage of course there were other nerfs to it as far as its pullout time it's it's uh you know the double pump swap time between shotguns and there was just a bunch of other changes there also one with the headshot multiplier on that one but the double barrel actually isn't as bad as I think and I use it in this gameplay and if you have a big amount of shields i run a pretty interesting inventory in this gameplay which i'll talk about right now but basically this is early game if you want to go for high kills you want to go for wins uh tilted towers is your place to go you're going to always have a plethora of loot and even if you don't have the best loot if as long as you can find some shields and a shotgun early you can usually slay out and get more loot based off that as you can see here i'm using the double barrel the thing with the double barrel is as long as you can build in between the time between those two shots it's still a viable weapon in my personal opinion would i take the heavy over it yes every single time i take the heavy over it but i think I'm going to start taking the double barrel over the blue pump because that has been sort of a dilemma for me but you can see there right there to the body and the thing with the double barrel is it's also you don't have to be the most skilled to use it because all you have to do is be good at movement positioning and getting close to them with building which of course sounds easier said than done but you don't have to focus on hitting them in the headshot you just have to be in that same sort of square vicinity of them and pop them right in the body for some big damage with that shotgun so early game here you can see I'm basically what you want to do is you want to clear out tilted for kills and then you want to farm out and clear out the rest of it as far as farming there's not too much materials you can scavenge you know out, out from the park or from the tree on the other side uh, but there is definitely a lot of chests and loot and you can see right there once again i hit him for one what was it 107 117 and then 90 deadly stuff as long as you are really close to the enemy and one key with the, the double barrel is concealing it you don't want the enemy to know you have a double barrel until you're already fighting and you're close to them because if they're a smart player and they hear you reloading or cocking that double barrel they're going to try to stay at a distance from you that's just the way it works that's something that i'll do if I'm up above and I hear someone has a double barrel, you definitely don't want to test that player's gangster, you know, to, to say, and you can see right here, I hit for 96 and 47, and the second shot was kind of off, but I'm still doing good damage, and the thing with this is you need some sort of weapon to finish them off, which is great because I have the P90, but I also drop the P P90 later for a little bit of a different inventory, but you can see here, this was obviously a good game, we got three purple weapons, three minis, and a uh, 50 pot, which, or not a 50 pot, we have a, a shield, a uh, med kit, what do, I, what do I call the shield, but we're good to go here and we have five kills out of tilted with 30 so this is the potential for a good game at this point when you clear out the, the people that sort of uh immigrate or, or move you know uh into tilted late from other areas like greasy uh like the, the stadium the soccer field the pleasant different stuff like that after that that's probably when you want to leave and that's why i'm like you know just just making sure i farm out the rest of tilted here and then i'm going to be on my way and usually the rotation i make is towards dusty divot towards the middle of the map is usually pretty much a, not a safe rotation the opposite of safe it's a safe rotation if you want to get more kills rotating towards the middle of the map and that's what i do uh, but before i do that the reason why i come up here north and check this is because the zone was moving in based off of north and i know that that's a more populated area of the map now in season six than it was in the past so i do a little bit of a, of a drive by or walk by here and walk past the lake of course the lake is not really popping anymore you can see some bills there i think some people fought there early game but it really isn't popping anymore because of the fact that the floating island is moving around anyway i see this guy and I'm always worried about peeking people who are staring at me hard like that because they could have a sniper. I get that pre-damage in, which is key. Even if I just hit him for like 70, 80 there, it allows me to push up. And now I know I have the height advantage on this guy. Boom. He actually pops out in the open. What I was looking for there was a shotgun rush because once you have them weak, you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to finish them off as long as you don't whiff your shots um, with, the, uh, with, with the double barrel. But you can see here with the inventory that I rock with, now I'm looking very, very good. But the only thing is I'm only holding four minis. So the max 
maximum I could get up to after a fight would be 150 health. And if I go down to my HP, I'm in trouble because usually I don't mind not carrying med kits or bandages, but usually I'll have something else like a campfire or a slurp or a chug just in case I need health. At this inventory, I'm risking it and hoping that if they do big damage to me, that they have some sort of shields or health. I see this next player up here and you can see here my rotation was correct. Moving towards the middle of the map and also moving towards the north where the zone was cutting off was a very smart play. I'm able to pull up on this guy, get some pre-damage in as well, but I end up just holding down the trigger and taking him out, which isn't too hard with the gold scar. Still probably the best gun in the game. A lot of people ask me silenced versus unsilenced. I like the silenced one better, but the gold scar is deadly. So you can see here, this is where I go a little bit rogue with it. This is more like a season six inventory because let's be honest, SMGs have been nerfed. They're still great. P90 is great. SMG is great. I'm still going to use them in the majority of games, but it's not the same as when it was the original P90 or when we had the drum gun. So what I chose choose to go with here is um, basically using the scar as my finishing weapon off the double barrel. So the double barrel and then switching to the scar, which isn't that bad. Of course, you don't have the fire rate or anything like that of the, P the P90 or the other SMGs. But if you hit people, this scar will do like 72 damage to the head, like 36 to the body, 35 to the body, something like that. You're doing big damage and you can use that as a finishing weapon just like you see right here. Right here, this guy rushing me. Now, I'm in trouble here because what I want to do is create space so that I can reload my double barrel. Obviously, the element of surprise is gone here. I have no choice to, but, you know, to conceal the double barrel. I try to ramp back up. He ends up hitting me in the back, which will happen. When you go for the ramp, you are exposed a tiny bit. Luckily, I don't take too much damage. He goes for the ramp up, and I choose to just shoot him down because I realize he's not connected. He falls down, and this is where I go for the surprising attack. When he's probably looking to heal, boom, pull up on him, and two double barrels again. As you can see... The base damage was nerfed, but this thing is still deadly, especially if you can combine it with a grappler combo. Anyway, I'm able to find his loot, and um, once again, I'm sticking with this inventory, and I'm sticking with an inventory that is kind of interesting. You know, I have my very close range weapon, I have my medium and longer range weapons with the AR and the noob tube. So right here, what I'm trying to do is I have zone advantage, as you would, as I would call it. You know, I'm not sure if that's a the, the term that goes around in Fortnite, but that's what I've called it, and it probably is. Zone advantage is basically the zone is moving, and I'm closer to the next zone than him, so he has no choice unless he has a portal rift or something like that. He has to run right through me, so that's why I'm putting the pressure on. I realized this guy was a decent player. That's why I was putting the pressure on with these grenade launchers, plus I was also hoping at the fact that once I got this kill, if I used too many of the grenade launchers, I could switch back to that inventory. You know, I can basically switch to whatever fits my needs at that point. I can go with either the grenade launcher or this guy would probably have some sort sort of finishing weapon, you know, SMG or potentially a grapple gun or sniper or something else that could fit in that third slot. So, or that fifth slot. So right here, I'm waiting on this guy. Eventually he decides to make his move. Well, he doesn't really decide. The storm decides for him and I'm pulling up on him and I hit him right there. You see the hundred damage with the uh, grenade launcher. And after that happens, you are in control of the fight. That's all you're looking for with the grenade launcher mainly. And the fact is that I think that the grenade launcher and the RPGs are still so strong in this game because more people can build than ever nowadays. And that's something that's just straight up a direct counter you know in your last slot you like to have a direct counter to building which you can either have an, a grenade launcher or which i like call a noob tube from call of duty an rpg or like a grapple gun is pretty much a counter to building as well um or even a port of port of fortress something like that so you can see there i do swap out the double barrel for the uh gold heavy which i think is a good choice gold heavy and the scar are, are still a good combo and the scar is still a good finishing weapon but i have to do it at sort of a longer range and you know shotgun ammo is something that you're always going to have way too much shotgun ammo, like mid game or late game, which I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's nice not having to worry about that right here. I'm just checking for any sort of chest to see if there's anything to, uh, you know, top me off with like a slurp or something like that. Anyway, I'm able to see this guy up on the hill. And the reason why I'm so confident here is if you guys can see is the amount of launch pads or jump pads, whatever you want to call them as I have, uh, you know, saving those for late game can be a very, very key. But when you have a lot of them, you might as well go have a party with them. It was kind of like a bounce pads. They give you an extreme advantage towards the late game. And of course, bounce pads aren't, you know, in the game anymore. Um, but basically I was being shot in the back there. So I cover my back. This guy shoots me down and I ramp right back up on top of him right there. Something that's, you know, if I was just a bit quicker placing down my ramps, I could negate a lot of damage but I hit him for 173 to the head which is basically a straight up one punch knockout you know unless you have 200 health which he did but that just means I just hit him for one more bullet with the scar and that right there that clip right there shows why even though I'm making some nice double barrel plays and I'm even confident enough with the double barrel to use it without a grappler and without a, a finishing weapon 
the, the, the heavy is just the king of the shotgun realm and you're good to go with that. So right here, I realized some of his loot drops. So I'm going to drop down and grab it. Once again, there is another jump pad that, that is found right there. Um, and of course I am looking as good as possible on material. So I'm sticking with my inventory right now because I have basically a lot of different shields, noob tube for, for long range. And then once again, the scar, if it comes down to spraying with the scar, I'm confident enough to, I know it's not ideal, but it will work. And I think this is an inventory that you'll see people running a lot more in season six unless they have like a p90 you know if you only have like a common smg an inventory like this is probably a lot better and it is more tactical you have to play a lot smarter and you have to rely on building a little bit more because the smg was like you one of your it was sort of an anti-building thing not as much as a grenade launcher but you could sort of straight uh spray through people's builds so i realize there's still five left or four enemies if you want to call it that so i'm like you know what? i have like nine traps let's set up some traps down here and i get surprised completely there's just a guy there i didn't even realize till because i was just so focused on the trap Anyway, this guy was obviously not the best player here. He was hiding, hit him for 111 with the shotgun, and from there, it was pretty easy. Of course, I missed the shotgun shot, but boom. You can see right there, the scar does work out. Now, right here, because this is only four players left, I decide to make the change and go with the P90 because I don't need double heals. When, when you're in the top situation, usually you just want to carry like a, either three big pots or 10 mini. Something like that is perfect and just hope you don't go down to HP because if you do, they're probably not, not going to give you time to heal anyway, and that's sort of the mentality behind a you know something like this uh in the game so right here i'm exchanging a grenade launcher fight with this guy he's using rpgs he eventually does knock me down but you can see here on the zone once again and i can't stress this enough as far as the tips and trick for season six rotating early late game the zones move faster there's less time in between them you have to be quick and you have to be on point with your decision making. You can see here, I'm basically staying in here and this zone ends and you can see the next zone is going to start in 30 seconds already. So I barely have time here. He knocks me down. Luckily, I catch myself with a... Um, with a ramp and the key to do that is just to negate a little bit of the fall damage obviously i could have landed on the higher point of the ramp and probably saved myself 10 damage right there was extremely unlucky or good play on his part i'm not sure if it was luck or, or planned um he doesn't end up pushing me after because he has the zone but he hits me with an rpg knocks me down or shoots me down as he hits me with the rpg which sort of combos me for a lot of damage and here's the struggle that you might run into with not having extra shields you know i'm going to be a bit weaker of course like i said launch pads are the best for late game i rotate using a launch pad and now immediately i have once again zone advantage on this guy he thought he had zone advantage he obviously wasn't accounting for the fact that i could have a porter rift or a jump pad or something like that so that's what i do i'm able to once again put the pressure on him with this grenade launcher which ends up working quite well basically countering his building and then uh the, the third player actually dies to the storm so this is a 1v1 and i'm able to finally take him out i see him for 19 with the heavy obviously not the the ideal damage i want to do one thing you have to watch for you have to be a little more cautious with having people trapped in, in builds um you know when you don't have the ideal inventory even though i did right there i stuck with the scar with the heavy was able to get the win hope you guys did enjoy it. drop a like subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and hopefully this video did help you guys out season six is awesome i've been loving it and hopefully these tips will you can implement them into your gameplay i'm out peace